Thank you. Thank you, Mark. So, a warm welcome from my side also to all of you. It's, um, my name is Heike, as they introduced me already. Um, I'm a key account manager at Shopware. I have been for three and a half years. So I think I know quite a deal about our company and our product. And I'm very, very happy and excited to do this little presentation for you today. I hope it's going to be more of a conversation rather than a presentation. So I have this tendency because I'm excited about our project, uh, about our product and about our company. So please stop me every now and then and ask questions and or give me just the feedback and how you think, uh, feel things are. And um, otherwise I'd say I just uh, dig in now. So just to give you a short heads up of what I'm going to present. Shop welcome, we already had that. An introduction to Shopware. How, who are we actually? What kind of company is it? Because we want to be tangible, we want to be there for you. So you should also know about where we come from, why are we in the UK now, etc. etc. Then I will dig into Shopware 5 live presentation. So Shopware 5 is our current version. So going to show you bits and pieces there, just very high level, but we can get into more details later on if you want. And um, then Mark House from CB Squared is here. Wave your hand, Mark. Hello, there you go. He will show, uh, he will give you some insights into one of the Shopware Enterprise projects, Hughes, who recently um, went live. And then hopefully we're going to um, uh, finish everything up with a, an open discussion and get more feedback, get your thoughts, etc. Okay, so let's get cracking. So let's introduce you guys to Shopware. So who are we actually? Shopware has been, uh, well, Shopware was founded 17 years ago. So you might think now, 17 years, why have I not heard anything about Shopware? So um, Shopware only started really um, becoming popular internationally three, four years ago. And obviously it's a long journey to be established in, a, in, a, in such a competitive market also as the UK. We're the uh, leading e-commerce solution in Germany. And obviously um, we thought, okay, why not also um, repeat that success in other markets, but do it step by step. Let's not like conquer the world right away, but let's um, focus on specific markets. And obviously, um, the UK was very, very successful for us. Um, but it's been a journey. But you can simply rely on the fact that we're not a newcomer and you guys don't have to be first movers, but we're an established solution. Um, we have 150 employees, which is a super cool number to tell because when I joined Topware three and a half years ago, we were only um, half of it. So you see how quickly we have been growing. And I normally honor myself with knowing each and every one uh, name of my employees, but nowadays it's getting hard. <laughs> so I fail every now and then, but okay. Um, we have another very impressive number is we have 1,000 or more than 1,200 partners. Partners, what are partners? Partners are actually partners like system integrators, like uh, our co-sponsors today, GAPMD or CB Squared. So system integrators who actually take our standard solution and make super cool projects um, out of it and individualize it. Uh, but these are also technology partners, technology partners like the Nostos and the dot mailers, etc., who really complement our um, solution and form a great ecosystem around it. Because internationalization obviously is also about listening to the needs of country specific markets, uh, what kind of technologies that those people um, familiar with and what do they still want to work with when, when going for shopware. So that has all been taken care of. And then we are also very proud to say that we have more than 60,000 active clients. So a lot of people are using our solution already. So there's a great community. I have to be honest here, the majority is still in the German speaking markets, so Germany, Austria and Switzerland. But a great, great deal also comes from the UK, which is our main focus market today. And we're also looking into the Netherlands, where we have been successful um, so far too, and Italy. So as I said, we keep our feet on the ground and uh, we don't want to conquer the entire world um, in just one day, okay? Very general feedback for you who have not uh, heard about our solution, Shopware is totally open source. So you can dig into each and every line of the code anytime at GitHub, for example, and download our solution for free right away. It's PHP based, Symfony framework, um, and so we use the up-to-date technology. Okay, that might be relevant for the developers of you who would like to get their hands dirty with Shopware. Just a quick 
slide on. This is our um, super nice um, headquarter in the middle of nowhere in good old Schöpingen, which is a very rural town in the northwestern part of Germany next to the Dutch border. Actually, 8,000 uh, no, 8, people only live in this um, small village. I don't live there, but it's very, very nice to work there because once you look out of the window, you only see green fields and cows. So that's a quite a nice... Um, <laughs> nice yeah, good, good steak. <laughs> <laughs> and it's simply a very nice um, work environment overall. We have this beautiful new headquarters, which, by the way, is already too small for us. So we're building another building in, in the garden green over there, um, beginning uh, <laughs> next year. But also what is very, very nice is that all the different departments un are under one roof. So we can talk to each other very quickly. So it's very much of high importance for me to talk to support, to talk to the devs, to talk to you guys, and then obviously play this feedback back to each and everyone um, who needs to hear this. We have an in-house academy where we do regular trainings. We have lots of nice barbecues and parties out there. So it's also from a company perspective, a very, very, very nice and great work uh, place. Yes. Where's the nearest big city that we might know? Um, Münster, you might have heard, and otherwise I'd say Düsseldorf. Oh, okay. Okay. So Düsseldorf is roughly one hour, one and a half hour by car away. So there are not so many <laughs> big cities around, to be honest. So Münster is the nearest one. Okay. Yeah. So let's have a quick look at our history maybe because yes, I remember you as you remember, 17 years. So we started quite decently and also according to Google Trends and our popularity, quite decent, but everything changed and we had a real turning point in 2010 when we decided to go open source, completely free and open source. And then afterwards, the development was, was huge until now where we reached our peak of 60,000 installations. You might wonder what makes us so um, successful and it's actually the basis of actually these three guys. And these three guys are our, um, our CEOs and they are still on board. So uh, actually the guy on the left hand side, Stefan, Hein, uh, Stefan Hamann, founded the company 17 years ago and he's the technical nerdy guy who's all about um, trends and, and um, programming and developing. And he was joined by his brother Sebastian on the right hand side who's all about design, marketing, have a look at our website, have a look at our platform obviously, have a look at our headquarters, everything you see is very very well designed and great marketing etc behind it and he's responsible for all of it. And finally, last but not least, Stefan Heine was joined uh, or joined the, the two to form the three CEOs who represents all of the sales and relations part and it's very very good in networking and forming a community and make everything work together. And those guys are still on board, you know, they're still actually leading the company, which is nice for you. You can talk to those guys. They are real. They still do their job and they love it, obviously, and have been for 17 years. And what's also very interesting to know is that we're still 100% equity finance. Even I get these days, get emails about, hey, funding, huh, investment. No, we really, really, really are proud that we are still um, equity finance, that we can decide which way we want to go, what we want to do next. We don't have to listen to any investment saying you have to sell these and these and high numbers of licenses or on your roadmap this is next no we can really decide that on on our own together obviously with you so if you don't get feedback we will never know about what you want but if we do know what you want we're happy to flexibly and quickly realize that and have an ear on the market okay so behind the company um, well behind every successful company I believe they are good core values and we have them written on our chest so to say as you can see on the logo of those uh, men and they are actually being open authentic and visionary and I think it reflects um, many different aspects open of course being open source but also being open in the sense of talking to you guys and getting your open feedback Authentic, as I said, having our feet on the ground, still being in that little town, good old shopping, and, and not in, I don't know, New York or Berlin or whatever it is. And last but not least, which sometimes seems as an irony, 
being still very visionary and already thinking about trends and uh, envision how e-commerce can look like for you guys, for your customers in 10, 15, even 20 years. So for example, in our hack quarter, we have an open device lab, which is the nerdiest place in our headquarter with virtual reality um, glasses, with 3D printers, with lots of things you can try out and test how e-commerce could already be in five years or whatever it is. And we also always um, make sure Sure that a great deal of our turnover is reinvested in research and development so that we still have a feeling for the pulse of the markets and already give that to you out of the box because that's beautiful about a standard solution I think if lots of stuff can be handled out of the box okay um, I think on the basis of those um, values, we were able, as I said, to have more than 60,000 customers and I brought a selection with me and as you can see, also newer clients we were able to acquire are already there. So, for example, my wallet. So maybe also you might can share a little bit more about my wallet later on. And also Mark will um, Mark House will share something about Hughes. But I think what this um, slide actually represents is that a shopware is a very flexible standard solution that can cater the needs of many different customers, also size-wise. So actually our bread and butter business as of recently has been um, like small to medium sized enterprises but together with them and with time and with the growth those customers um, were facing we were able to enter also enterprise spaces and have those requirements mirrored back from our customers to us so we could also dive into that segment more and more and also when it comes to different industries Stabilo might ring a bell with a lot of guys. We're shopper is totally keen about football, so also BVB Dortmund is one of our clients, for example, which we're very proud, proud of. B2C, B2B. So there are so many different requirements, and our solution can can uh, tick so many different boxes. So and we actually boiled it down to four pillars. So Deepak, uh, that's I think your handwriting. The shopware four pillars, and it's actually those four pillars. So uh, most importantly, Shopware is not only an e-commerce platform, but also content piece. So it combines content and commerce very, very well and smoothly out of the box. Uh, I will show it in a second in the live demo, obviously. And the cool thing is that uh, it is out of the box, as I said, and you don't need to have any developing skills to handle those features. So also internally at your customers or at the customer size, they can manage a lot of stuff like, I don't know, coming up with cool banners, creating cool marketing landing pages while, for example, the agencies can then spend more time on those tricky things like setting up the right integration setup or um, using our REST API for integration building and stuff like that. So um, that's a really, really huge um, huge advantage and it's also moving away from just trans transactional uh, centric approach to to a more inspirational approach to really have great content where you can engage with your customers on your on your website but more in detail maybe um, in the live demo usability is another point as I said the content piece is out of the box for everyone usable you don't have to be a developer to understand everything a lot of features are already included in the standard so you can really save some time and you can really get live with your project very very soon which saves time and thus money obviously scalability so especially what I told you with Shopper Enterprise that a lot of our customers have been growing with us so they told us we have the needs of enterprise customers, be it B2B, be it scalability, performance wise, et cetera, et cetera. So please give us something. So we have also um, come up with some extra models uh, or extra um, tools for enterprise customers. For example, also when it comes to setting up dealer integration, so a dealer network, form a dealer network with your wholesale business, for example, um, and really being able to um, cater high performance setups and stuff like that. And also, last but not least, total cost of ownership. So what's very special with Shopware is that our license costs are one time, one time fees. So you pay the license fees once and you have the license your entire life. 
So there are no reoccurring license fees or any revenue share model or something. Uh, we don't care if you if you if your business is growing and you're doing well. I applaud you and I'm happy for you. And we don't say okay now you've reached I don't know the five million turnover um, lines to give us more money. No, that's not going to happen. So yes. Um, so there are different um, license model or different licenses, starting from the for free community edition, which I already mentioned. Download it, download it, guys. Community for free. You download it from GitHub. Um, then there are two like mid-sized licenses for the SMEs called Professional and Professional Plus. Professional starts at 1,295 euros one-time fee where also support is already included for the first year for free, by the way. And the Professional Plus is roughly 6K one-time fee. And the Enterprise starts at uh, 30K one-time fee. Uh, I think we really, really should have the live demo now. Before I just very quickly, as I said, we did our homework, so we have a working uh, ecosystem around it with over 3,000 extensions in there just because it's a meetup and I hope you guys would like to like, um, get the community going you can obviously contribute as agencies as freelancers happy for you guys to do so plugin themes whatever it is it's open source as I said please feel free to do that and make a business out of it that's there's great potential and also the UK ecosystem has been uh, established so that your customers can simply tick the boxes and you guys can say, okay, let's get cracking right away. But I don't want to lose any much time here, so those are the guys we're still talking to. Let's get going with the live presentation. Um, before I do so, I would, as I said, Chopper 5 is our current um, solution, and it was released under a certain motto, and this, this motto is um, emotional shopping on any device. So let me tell you about that motto. It's actually, it has two aspects. A, bringing back the emotions to your online shop, and B, be device specific. Don't only think in terms of desktop, but also think in terms of mobile, in terms of tablet PC. So we found really that there's a great gap between high street shops, where you enter you enter high street, high street shop and you have this customer journey, you have the lighting, you have great jobs or great people doing great jobs on interior design, etc., etc. So you get engaged so well, and then you get online and you see classical listings, and it's, it's really not conveying anything about the brand and the message they really want to engage with you. And that's actually where Shopware um, starts or where Shopware wants to give you um, a good tool to do that also in terms of your online shop. So let's get cracking with the online demo then. I will quickly sit down. So you can see our demo shop here. And just to make it clear again, this is Shopware out of the box. So everything we did here, we did only with configurations in the backend. So everyone who is not a developer can get to that example here. Okay? Um, as I said, um, being device specific and being uh, fully responsive. Uh, Shopper out of the box comes with a fully responsive template. Let me quickly see if I can manage from here. So you see the different breaking point and points and how it scales with it. So for example, here we have the breaking point for the tablet PC. You can still navigate through everything very well. The content um, is responsive too, but for example, the icons, um, uh, the different um, functions become icons. Uh, you have an off-canvas menu, which is super nice for quickly uh, browsing through everything. And also if I find the next breaking point for the tablet, you see um, that also the search becomes an icon. And you can have an off-canvas shopping cart also, so you don't need to leave the page for editing your shopping cart. So much for on any device for being response um, specific and fully responsive out of the box. But let's talk about the content piece. The content piece in Shopware is actually called Shopping Worlds and it's your own CMS which enables you to create those cool um, landing pages as you can see for example on the home page. So what you have and I'm, showing, I'm going to show you in a second is you have a grid in the back end which resembles your front end and into that grid by dragging and dropping you can place certain elements like banners, like product boxes, like text fields, like code elements, video content, etc., etc., is adjusted for the size, and then off you go and have those cool marketing landing pages. Like you have that one where you have banners to the top, 
Uh, yes, yeah, so and um, manufacturer slider here. You have blog articles here, a text field here, product boxes, and a banner slider down here. But a very special mode or um, way of creating those um, engaging pages is actually called storytelling. So let me show you my favorite example, which can be found at the recipe category, as I like to travel and I like to cook. So you can always tell it's storytelling because you have this menu to the left hand side and it actually resembles the, the points, actually resembles different pages to that specific story and a customer can really dive into it. In this case it's all about um, fresh ingredients, recipes etc and you simply start on the first page, you get engaged. Let's stop here for a second, it's the apple salmon soup example so you can see that the beautiful pictures you see the soup you already get hungry you have the added content which is exactly relevant in this case namely the recipe and then in this specific moment you can have this element is actually not only a background banner but it's also um, an article listing attached to it again out of the box everyone can configure it and you see the products which are relevant here in this case the salmon uh, the bay leaves and so on and so on and you can simply um, go through this listing and if you think okay cool this looks great you simply click onto this um, element and you get into the so-called quick view and it's actually a light box which pops up with all the relevant um, with all the relevant information regarding the product come on demo shop don't screw with me right now I hope it's the Wi-Fi yes <laughs> let's try that one well, in theory, <laughs> um, you see all the relevant information of this product now and you can also directly put it into um, the shopping cart from here and as you could see, you can also swipe through the other products that are attached and this is also thought from um, a mobile point of view. So the entire responsive template was, was built with a mobile a first approach. So everything was tested on mobile first and then scaled up. And um, you can also very nicely, for example, from a tablet, scroll with the touch of your finger through the different um, products that are attached. It's very unfortunate this doesn't work right now, but I think you can you get the bigger picture. Once you don't um, like those products, you can simply click out of that light box and you can simply go on exploring that story. In this case, we have more um, article listings here. Now let's stop also here at the finest herbs page of the recipe story what you can also do out of the box and i think that's relevant to so many different engaging products like i don't know uh jewelry fashion etc but also very um i don't know b2b uh, related uh projects you can do an image mapping so you simply ma um, upload an image like the one here with the herbs and on certain areas you map the um specific product and link it to the mapping so in this case clicking um onto that hub you can get into the quick view and see in best case sorry the details of the product and obviously you can directly get into the item detail page or put it directly into your um, shopping cart so one more addition maybe um, I mentioned the motto emotion shopping on any device and it's maybe very nice to see that the shopping worlds can be um, device specific. So if you say I want to show different content to my mobile customers and um, display a mobile voucher or whatever kind, I mean a less sophisticated banner composition etc etc, you can simply come up with another shopping world. So you can see as you remember this is a little different an experience than you saw from the desktop view. So you can have it like a little less sophisticated but you can also have totally different content on um, this viewport so to say if you wanted that you don't have to but if you wanted you can be totally different and also to very quickly show how the quick view elements look like once you click on them and internet connection is running let's see that it works now so you have all the uh, necessary information available and for example you could also jump in a super zoom and have a closer look at that like, is, is it different content per uh, breakpoint? Yes, per 
her so break. You could have different content on tablet, on mobile. Yes, laptop, it's actually five, five view, viewports, as we or yeah. But I'm happy to show you right away. So let's dig into the backend for a moment. This is how our backend currently looks like. It's very clean. You get into working it quite quickly. Even people who don't have a technical background can do it. The shopping words, like the CMS functionalities you just saw, can be found at Marketing Shopping Worlds. And don't be overwhelmed, there are a lot of examples in there, so it might be overwhelming for the, seeing it for the first time. Uh, but we can use also the filters to the right hand side. So the shopping words, those landing pages, can always be created on your home page at any main or subcategory, as a category introductory page, so to say, or also as specific landing page, pages with specific links for your email campaigns, for example, okay? And we had a look at the Cooking Pleasure in Provence recipe one. And now for you, it might also get clear why there are two now, because if you have a look at the device column, you see that there is one which is applicable for the desktop and tablet viewports. And for the smaller end devices, we always have two viewports. So for tablet, we have the portrait one and the landscape one. And also for a mobile, we have the portrait and the landscape viewport. So you can even distinguish between those and having those cool features like, um, I don't know, have a tablet in a landscape view where it says, please turn your tablet and you turn it and something else pops up, a video starts going or something. So you can already configure it from here. But let's have a look at the desktop one we saw in the beginning in the storytelling where you have section by section. So as I said, you have, um, uh, you have some kind of grid to the right hand side, which resembles your front end. And then on the left hand side, you have the general configurations. I don't want to get into too much detail, but just to let you know, uh, here you can set for what end devices those landing pages should, should be applicable. You can limit the content to certain customer streams or customer groups, you could also tell them. So you could segment what content is shown for what people. So if you have your VIP shoppers who always buy for more than 200 pounds or whatever it is, you can have totally different content than for your, I don't know, savers who only buy for five pounds or so. And you have a time setting, which is also very, very handy in day-to-day -day work. For example, if you already now want to create your Black Friday campaigns, your Christmas campaigns, your Valentine's campaigns, etc., you can already activate it now. Um, let's jump to the element library. Those elements are available out of the box. So you have text banner, product, category teaser, videos, a code element, the side view elements where you have the background banners and the article listing and you can also add many many more developing your own ones or going to our community store and simply um, adding plugins to it but I think those ones get you very 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 far in um, setting up your marketing pages and just very quickly if I for example wanted to add a section here you see I'm getting an additional page in my story simply resuming how this works. So you have this grid now and into this grid you simply, by dragging and dropping, place an element. So for example, that banner now. Plop, I just let it drop into the grid and then I adjust the size. So in this case, let's assume I wanted the banner to cover the whole section here. I simply adjust the size of it. So coming back to the banner element, <laughs> so you can simply <laughs> adjust the banner element where you can now assign any picture to it. So I normally like to, I don't know, go for that lady with the hat and the skis. So obviously you can also upload your own images. It's just the demo shop obviously has pictures already in there and demo data. So I assign that um, a picture. You can already get a little preview here and can adjust the focal point where the resizing shall happen. And you have this little, uh, obviously you can link it now to any kind of page, so a category page or an artic article detail page. Uh, but you can also do the image mapping now, as you remember we did with the herbs. So if I click on that, I can add a mapping now. And let's assume, for example, we want to sell the head of the young lady. So I simply take it and adjust the size of it 
So you can by drag can do it by dragging and dropping, or you can just uh, adjust the size here. And then you can simply browse your products and now link any um, any product to it. So the German word for hat is actually Mütze. I don't know if you knew. So if you didn't learn anything, you learned that the German word for hat is Mütze. Um, so we can now adjust the elastic Mütze to it. Um, you can um, add tool tips and icons. You can update it. You can add more mappings here, right? So to save that one, we save the ban element and save the shopping word. And let's see what magic we have been able to do in like two minutes. I will clear the cache, hoping that the internet connection will still be with us. I will go to the same shopping world again and simply reload everything. Let's wait for the magic to happen. And then if you remember, we added the second section in our story. Ah, nicely put on the forehead. And then we have our hat. So it's very, very quick. It's fun, it's efficient, it's engaging. And I could go in flowers, but I will not do that. So <laughs> please feel free to um, share your thoughts and maybe comment questions is it something you would use you could use uh, is it something that would take some work off of your shoulders Sorry, I missed it was this available all, all editions or is this only uh, enterprise <laughs> no he's kidding so um so the shopping was the standard ones are available out of the box and it's very hard for me to, oopsie, to say that as a salesperson because that <laughs> really makes my life a little harder. From my perspective, it's my enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the key enterprise call-outs as a salesperson? Uh, the features, you mean. Well, features and services, they're two sides of things. So, um, for example, with enterprise, you get the full feature sets. And then, and I have not even getting started. So there, there's very, very, as I said, one of the main USPs is a very comprehensive feature set out, of, set out of the box. So all of the marketing features you can think of, uh, one of the features you get is, the, is called ad, um, Advanced Promotion Suite, uh, which is very helpful in setting up all the kind of promotions you want with all the rights and rules you want to um, limit your promotions on. like. Only get the discounts if you fall into the customer group women and if you have more than three items in the shopping cart and you your shopping cart value is over fifty pounds and then only then you can get your promotion, etc. etc. But in terms of um, uh, services and support, you get this so-called um, diamond subscription which means you have a direct dial into the sales department into your key card manager and your enterprise relations manager to develop the project and to keep you up to date on our roadmap and on things you might need and want in the future you have a direct dial into our dev team you get developer support which is essential because if you as a customer for example also would like to do lots of think in, things in-house and get a little bit more independent of agencies sorry agencies um, then you could also use us and and um, get developer support technical support emergency support 24 7 so if your shop is down or your shopping cart functionality is not working for whatever reason you can uh, issue an emergency ticket and in among in 60 minutes at latest we call you back and we figure it out um, what else you get access to so-called enterprise accelerators which are specific modules we only have available for enterprise which for example is an elastic search integration uh, with a backend setup, or so you can set it up in the backend. You don't need to have any skills on Elastic yourself. It is actually a content search, a fuzzy search. Um, it can feature, for example, you can very much um, individualize the ranking and the search result page you get from there. I can also show you live in a bit if you like. Um, and other enterprise accelerators like, for example, the dealer network I quickly um, uh, mentioned in the beginning. And obviously you get pref you get preferred services in uh, all kind of terms, not only support. Sorry? Sounds awesome. <laughs> That's a good feedback. <laughs> I hope that answers your question. Any more questions so far? Yes. The um, 
shop wear store and yes. plugins. Yes. Is there any kind of quality control on yes, that? Yes, there is. There is. So um, that's actually one of my next slides, but I can just tell it right away if you like. So the Shopper community store has roughly 3,000 plugins in it. And to be honest, a fair deal of them are also German. Uh, a lot of our um, plugin manufacturers, which again are also a lot of agencies, would like to follow our lead to internationalization. So they also provide them in English, that's great. But still, there's a high potential for you guys to get involved and uh, provide your own plugins. And then again, this could be a good return on invest for individual functionality you program for specific, um, specific projects, etc. To answer your question, sorry, we have an automatic code review. So as a plugin manufacturer, you upload your plugin, which then gets reviewed by us uh, in terms of um, like the setup of the plugin, the folder structure, the bootstraps, etc. Um, but obviously, the main responsibility in terms of functionality lies with the plugin manufacturers themselves, as they need to make sure the functionality they are programming also is also running. In addition to the uh, code review, we also have um, certain batches or certifications in our um, in our community store, so that customers can see is it actually a good plugin. Because, for example, on the um, on the basis of how many downloads, uh, how many other plugins, how many good reviews, etc. So we really try to be as transparent as possible for customers to show them what plugins are good plugins. Because honestly, not all of them are good, and we cannot help it. We try to be as quality driven as possible but there will always be some like cheap i guess but we try to um try to avoid that as much as possible so if we wanted to find a plugin to help us with i don't know say promotion yes could we call you up and ask you definitely and say look there's 50 definitely always i always recommend you guys and you're all in germany yeah. <laughs> which never happens. Uh, well, you can always call me up and ask for recommendations okay. because that's because we have the experience and obviously the um, feedback from others also. So I'm happy to give you recommendations. And what is always possible is that all of the plugins can be downloaded with uh, test licenses first. So you don't have to buy them right away or rent them right away without being able to test them. And I always recommend testing them first because obviously you also want to make sure my individual template, is it compatible, how does functionality work, I think most of the agencies might know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, do you ever work with third party providers without providing a plugin? As in bespoke? Sure. Something that isn't, um, what, is part of the store, just something that has to be integrated? I'm guessing being open source, that's... Um, of course, that's, that's usual. Uh, of, of course, from my sales perspective, I would want a lot of individual programming to be translated into a standard plugin so that a lot of customers can make use of this functionality and it's also a return of invest for you. For you, why not make use of your initial effort and uh, get some return on that? Um, but of course, yes, and, and you can turn Shopware upside down if you want it. But that brings me to another point developer trainings, developer documentation. So I, I rather prefer to continue the presentation because it's on the slides there. But if you have any questions regarding the live shop, tell me maybe also afterwards. And for all customers and for all interested parties, download the community edition or get to me and you will get an individual demo shop, which is obviously hosted with us. So it means no access to the code, but access to all of the functionality we provide um, in the standard uh, for 30 days for free and afterwards it just deletes itself. So don't put a lot of uh, effort into it because then it will be deleted, okay? And if they're technical, you can spin what like, that on Bitnami as well, can't you? You can what? Use Bitnami to spin up. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay, so very, very quickly because this is a shopware meetup and this is also to like um, get the community engaged. How can you do that and, and how um, uh, can you get engaged? So, A, as I said, obviously all of our code is on GitHub. So, uh, you have a day specific 
status of our solution on GitHub. Please download it, get engaged with our developers, they love it, uh, create pull requests, etc., etc., and take a good, good look also in our technical basis. Um, we also have a Shopware GitHub channel, um, the official chat room to get engaged with our um, developers. Please use that too. And uh, as I mentioned, we also have very, very comprehensive um, uh, Shopper developer documentation. This contains the backend side of things, so developing plugins, but also the documentation on our free REST API for integrations and synchronization of data, but also the front end design side of things, the theme and how you can either build a theme from scratch or derive from our standard responsive template. So it's all documented there. We have a developer blog. Please approach me if you ever want to um, create a blog article there. Our developers love that. So if you have done a cool project and you want to share something with the developer community, please uh, approach us, happy to, to push you there. And there's also a labs um, uh, section where we talk about how we envision Chopper to be in five to 10 years, technology-wise, function-wise. Please get engaged. And also, if you ever have feedback for us in terms of functionality, in terms of um, improvement suggestion, we have an open issue tracker where you can report right away to our developers what is on your mind. And those developers regularly run through all of the tickets and qualify them. Of course, they cannot promise that if you um, create a ticket today, tomorrow you will have the requested feature, for example. But I guarantee, guarantee to you that every ticket is seen and every ticket is qualified here. And we work on the basis of votes. So it's very important for you guys to get your feedback on there so that other people who have the same issue see it, can vote for it. And for every new release, we take a look at the most voted tickets. And obviously we cannot help, but we want to make you happy. And then obviously we try to create those features, for example, or fix those bugs or whatever it is. In addition to that, we regularly have hackathons. And this is a screenshot from one of our last hackathons. Um, so it gives you the opportunity to really program and get your dirt handy with our developers, have some, I don't know, some beers, have some cool projects on, on what you want to um, develop. It doesn't even need to make sense. It can just be fun. And you get engaged with our guys and can really have a great um, communication here. In addition to that, we regularly have think tanks, especially when it comes to functionality mm. in our enterprise segment. I talked about those accelerators in the enterprise segment and uh, B2B and dealer integration and whatever it might be, but there might be something we have not considered yet and therefore give that feedback to us and we're happy to evaluate that idea because we don't want to just program something and assume you will like it, but we are reliant on you saying this is what I want and then we're happy to serve you in this. And then um, how can you get actual knowledge? Uh, well, how about you go to Udemy? Anybody knows Udemy? Okay, good. So Shopware loves Udemy and we're trying to go down that um, digital, um, well, digital training path where we um, translate all of our trainings to the online sphere and get you going when it comes to template trainings, developer trainings, but also user trainings. So I'm in the middle of um, uh, in the middle of recording user trainings also to introduce users to the uh, to the backend and standard functionalities, so that you guys don't have so much work with um, doing those trainings in house for your customers. And so we really want to make it as easy as possible for you to get cracking. And last but not least, offer your plugins again or themes in the community store. So now you have all that knowledge from the developer um, documentation, from the meetups, from the trainings, and then please feel free to make money out of it and offer um, themes, plugins, whatever it is in our store. We also have a plugin sales guide um, I'm happy to share with you.